What's going on Warriors? It's your boy Lionheart. I'm back. Feels good man. Feels real good to be back. So as you know man, I'm going in with like my Resident Evil, Kingdom Hearts, you know I'm streaming quite a bit, you know, because those are two legendary games to me. So I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, I know I was supposed to do like a Dragon Ball Super Broly movie review um lot like a couple days ago but you know i've just been caught up doing stuff and i know even though i have been playing and streaming stuff you understand i've not actually just been doing that i've been working and i've had people around while i'm doing that stuff and i've had to like go out and stuff like that so i've not been able to just sit down like this free time now i do let's go uh so yeah first of all let's say Dragon Ball Super Broly. 10 out of 10. This is a straight 10 out of 10 for an anime or for a movie, period. This movie is the first time, man, that I've watched an animation. No, no, no. Oh, I don't know. Can you call that um, Spider Man? End of the Spider Verse. It's the Spider Verse an animation. I guess you can. So if you can, then this is like the second animation I've ever watched in cinema, ever. Well, I did watch Shrek when it, Shrek came out. I didn't watch that in the cinema. So I guess you could say it's the third. But if you're talking like anime, first time. First time and it's the best time. That when I watch it, that cinema I went to watch, I went to watch it in Croydon. And the audience that I want to watch it with were actually pretty good. Yeah, because I was sandwiched in between two groups of people. Yeah. But... They were respectful. Everyone in the whole cinema was respectful, actually, if we call a spade a spade. Yeah. Like, there was a bit when the Ginyu Force and the Freezer Force first came to Planet Vegeta. And from that moment, I I kind of went into the zone. But there was it seemed like I kept on like having to remind myself I was in the cinema. Because the cinema was so dead quiet and it was packed. The cinema was actually packed. Yeah, it sold out. Yeah. But everyone in there knew what was up. Everybody was dead quiet because we were, everyone was just amazed by them watching a godlike, high level blockbuster Dragon Ball movie with effort, maximum effort put into it in terms of budget, promotion, animation, characters. Script, fight scenes, all in. This movie was all in. Yeah, from the very beginning, they introduced it to King Vegeta and Vegeta and the expectations that King Vegeta put onto Vegeta and how Vegeta had such incredible potential. And he was um, raised that way to be a super elite legendary Saiyan. And then Goku, who was looked up, down upon, and um, who was basically, they said he was going destined to be a, a, a grunt, a low level Saiyan, yeah? But he was, Goku was loved by DNA, his mum, and Burdock, his dad. And you got to see their interactions with Goku. You got to see the love that Burdock and DNA had for each other. Yeah, which is interesting because in the whole of Dragon Ball, you never see two people share that love that DNA and Burdock had for each other. Other than Videl, and well, Vegeta. Vegeta blatantly loves his wife. Uh, but Videl and Gohan as well, yeah. Because Goku, he don't love Chi Chi. Chi Chi loves Goku, but Goku don't love Chi Chi. He don't. He don't even, Goku don't even love his son, Gohan, yeah? So the fact that you got to see the connection between Goku's parents and Goku was very fascinating. And then you got to see the other side with Broly, with his dad, Paragus, yeah? They were raised three completely different upbringings, but they were still all very interesting because these guys are the legendary three Saiyans, like the three greatest Saiyans in existence, in history, and there ever will be. I love that. That is, it's not something like, it's not like 
Goku the antagonist and Broly the antagonist. No. It is Broly antagonist. Goku antagonist. Vegeta antagonist. Or you can look at them as all antagonists and protagonists. Because what is Broly fighting for? Broly is fighting because his blood tells him to fight. He is just a fighter. And his dad is a piece of shit. Yeah, that is telling him to fight or he will torture him. Yeah, so he's conditioned that way. Yeah, that movie, man, was just too good. It was too good. Animated, the budget, you could tell that this movie had a budget. You know where Goku fought Freezer and uh, Vegeta? Goku fought Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z when Vegeta uh, was in margin. He let himself get possessed by the margin ability so he could be pure evil. Yeah. That fight, the animation was incredible. Yeah. This fight, the whole fight, and the fight was long, man. It was like 30 minutes or something like that. Maybe even 40 minutes. Yeah. It was animated so well. Like when Vegeta fought against um, Broly. And was smashing up Broly. Like Vegeta was owning up Broly. Yeah. Like with swag. And I like how in this movie. They've kind of. Separated the fighting style. So Vegeta more uses kicks. Whereas Goku more uses punches. And Broly is more just. An evolved. Brawler slash grappler. Character. Yeah. And then Broly was actually getting owned up by Vegeta. That was so cool, man. That was so cool. You saw Super Saiyan um, Goku and Vegeta Super Saiyan God. Before they went to Super Saiyan Blue. Super Saiyan God Blue. Yeah. Mate. Mate, it's too good. But then there is one thing that I would say that I've got a big issue with Dragon Ball Super. And that is... How does the power levels work? Yeah, because Dragon Ball Z, they established Super Saiyan. You got Super Saiyan is 50 times. You're 50 times stronger in your Super Saiyan form than you are in your normal form. So whatever your normal form is, you're times that normal form by 50. Super Saiyan 2, you are two times stronger than a Super Saiyan. Yeah? So that means you are 100 times stronger than your base form. So your normal form, Super Saiyan times 50. Super Saiyan 2 times 100 of your base form. Super Saiyan 3, you are what 400 times stronger than your base form. Yeah? What Super Saiyan God? Nothing but fan theories. I don't care about fan theories. I want to know facts. Super Saiyan Blue. What is it? There's no information about it. And now they've introduced this thing where they say that um, all Saiyans have got an S cell. And the S cell is that your the higher the count, the stronger your Super Saiyan level or your Saiyan level or whatever. Yeah. And that's bullshit because that's never existed before. It's brand new, but whatever. Yeah. So I can't gauge how powerful Super Saiyan Blue is. I could see it's powerful, but then I sometimes I see it's incredibly powerful. But then there's other times where I see where it's not so powerful. So it's it's difficult for me to understand the power scaling of the transformations in Dragon Ball Super. Because I don't actually even like Dragon Ball Super now I think about it. The only thing I like about Dragon Ball Super was the story with Goku Black and Trunks. That's the only thing I like about Dragon Ball Super. Super Black was incredible for that. And then the Tournament of Power where Goku and Fre uh, Frieza teamed up against Juren. And Frieza fought against um, that trainee god of destruction. And... Ultra Instinct Goku transformation versus um, Juren. That's the only thing I liked about it, right? Oh yeah, I did like the bit where you know Vegeta. Any interaction, inter interaction Vegeta has with his family is godlike. 
as I said before, because Vegeta loves his wife and he loves his kids. Yeah, and that's one thing that is very apparent. Even though he tries to be stubborn about it, it's very clear that he loves his family. And that's what makes that character so cool now. Yeah, and he doesn't lose. The fact that Vegeta, that's one of the main reasons I watch this movie, is because I want to see Vegeta win and dominate. And when he fought against Broly, he dominated and he smashed up Broly. Like Broly was getting owned up. Yeah. When Goku fought Broly, Goku was getting owned up by Broly until Goku went Super Saiyan Blue. Then he started owning up um, Broly. It's only when Vegeta, I'm um, sorry, Frieza, um, killed Paragus. Yeah. And it triggered uh, Broly's Super Saiyan. Before we even talk about that, I've got a theory. Broly's power in this movie, I believe that was Super Saiyan 4. Yeah. Now the reason I say it is because he harnessed the power of the great apes. Without transforming into a great ape. That's Super Saiyan 4. And the fact that he's able to fight Super Saiyan God. The only thing that can let you do that. The level would be a Super Saiyan 4. And he looked like he was in Super Saiyan 4 mode. Yeah, he didn't have the fur on his body. But the logic of what a Super Saiyan 4 was. Is exactly what Broly was. And the guy was just too powerful. He was stronger than a Super Saiyan God. And then he became more powerful or as powerful as Fusion. Gogeta. He was powerful than Gogeta Super Saiyan. And that's ridiculous in itself. He was more powerful than Super Saiyan Fusion. Gogeta. Come on. And the fact that they made Broly a humanised character. Like he wasn't just some muscle balloon. Running all over the place going. I've got Kakarot. Kakarot smash. I love that. And they gave Broly, as I said, he gave they gave um him um Limo and Chile. I don't know if I'm saying their names right. Yeah. Those two characters were so good for Broly. Like the green girl that she said that she stole a vehicle from the Galactic Police. And the veteran in the Freezer Force. The I think he had orange skin and he had like a yellow hat. Like, those characters are sick because that girl can be, like, maybe, like, a love interest, a support system for Broly and understands him and tries to help him. And then you've got that other guy who's, like, a father figure and they care for Broly, yeah? And Broly's never had anyone to fucking care for him because his dickhead of a dad, Paragus, is a shithead and I'm glad that he's dead, yeah? Like, that character was not good for Broly. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that they've... I think they've made Broly canon now. I don't know, but I hope they have. Because I'd like to see that character some more, man. And the fact that Goku even came to him in the end and said to him, um, here's, some, here's some supplies for you. Food, um, clothes, and I don't want nothing from you. But I would like to train with you from time to time. Yeah? If that's okay. Also, I'd like to teach him some stuff. Man, Goku's cool, man. In that respect, Goku's cool. The only thing I don't like about Goku is the fact that he's such a shit dad and a shit husband. But other than that, Goku's cool, man. Goku's cool. This Broly movie is godlike, man. Like, it's an incredible movie. Like, the budget. You can say that the movie had a budget. There was no shortcuts. There was no point where the animation got shit. No point. Where the animation was garbage. It was always good all the way through. The writing was good. The script was good. The character development was good. It's good when you care about the characters. And you cared about the characters. Even Frieza was a three-dimensional character. When I say three-dimensional in terms of the character was interesting. Yeah, I mean it was funny. He wanted to Dragon Ball so he could wish for himself to be five centimeters taller i thought that was like bloody funny man and then boma wanted the dragon ball so she could be four years five years younger right like that's the, that that kind of thing was funny like even in the people in the cinema everybody was laughing at that bit you know even though it's a good thing to point out in the cinema when it finished i was clapping everybody was clapping in the cinema i can't that's i don't remember i've never clapped for a film in a cinema since I think uh, Matrix One, 
No, 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 no. I was going to cinema when Matrix 1 came out. There was a movie I went to, um, and I clapped. I do remember clapping. Maybe it was Batman, um, Dark Knight Rises, the, the, um, Dark Knight Returns, or something like that. Maybe it was that. I don't know. But I haven't clapped in a movie in years. Like, over 10 years, I've not clapped in the cinema, right? And, yeah, it was right, and everybody clapped. Because everybody... You have to be a Dragon Ball head, yeah, to go to the cinema to watch it. And everybody at cinema was. Yeah, when I was what, what, wearing this in the cinema, everybody knew what it was. Like, when I was in the queue in it. Like, like a lot of people were like, yeah, that's sick. Or like, I was getting, like, the head nod. Or people saying, that's a, that's a sick um, jacket. Because they couldn't see it was a hoodie from where they were standing. Or people were giving me, like, the thumbs up, like... Like that, all that kind of stuff. So it was like, it was good, man. It was good. So it's kind of like everybody was like, it's like the extended Dragon Ball family, yeah. So yeah, man, it's like very good. It was a good movie. Um, if you haven't watched it, you should watch it. And there was one big mistake that they made in this whole promotion of the Dragon Ball was they didn't believe in the fan base because the movie was a limited cinema release. The movie would have made way more money if they'd released it properly in all cinemas. So a lot of people, I had to watch the movie on my um, after work, and I cut it close because I just finished work. Yeah, and I had to get to the cinema in I think it was like thirty-five minutes, basically, because when I finished work, the movie started thirty-five minutes after I finished work. Yeah, so it was very limited and difficult to go watch the movie if you're working. But I had to watch a movie. I had to support the movie because, as I said before, I had the press copy before the movie came out. But I wanted to support the movie, and that's the reason I went to the cinema to watch it. And I'm so glad I did because the way the movie um, makes the characters you care about every single character. Like I actually like Goku more now because I met Gienae, his mum, Goku's mum. And Burdock, his dad, Goku's dad. Yeah, I respect it more. And I'm so happy about Vegeta. Because Vegeta was, he was bossing Broly's head, man. Like, he was smashing up Broly. Yeah. To the point, you know what I mean, where... Broly went Super Saiyan 4. Yeah, that's, he 100% went Super Saiyan 4. Do you know what I mean? To be honest with you, the best fight was... Vegeta versus Broly, if I'm being honest. I mean, when he fought, when Broly fought Gogeta, it was crazy. Like, it was so crazy that they altered reality. And even Gogeta was like, what is this? To the point where they actually, they reset reality. Because they destroyed the entire area. But after they, their power, their powers clashed and they, they altered reality. And then it came, they came out of the reality. The earth was mended again. What the hell? And that has happened once before. When Goku Black fought against um, Fujito. Yeah? And he did a certain attack. Like Goku... No, no. Goku Black was fighting against... I think it was... He was fighting Goku, wasn't he? Yeah, he was fighting Goku. And he did an attack with like some kind of... Kai... Scythe move and he ripped reality and he was looking at the rip of reality. He was like, What is that? I'm fucking godlike. Do you know what I mean? So that has happened before. But yeah, man. I mean Gogeta, he was a nutter. Like it was free. When Gogeta came, Broly had no chance. But he shouldn't have had no chance. It was only when he went Super Saiyan Blue, Broly couldn't go any further than that. And I like that. I like that. He where he clearly got beaten, but it was kind of undecided because Shile wished for the dragon to save Broly and take him back to his home world. The movie was good, man. It was a complete Dragon Ball movie. As I said, the only one mistake that I feel they made with that whole promotion was the fact that it was a limited cinema release they should have released it in more cinemas the movie would have made way more money than it did i think the movie made like a hundred million or well over a hundred million yeah but it could have made so much more 
way more if it was released for everybody to get access to it because Jackal Boy is massive man you know what I mean so yeah that's really all I wanted to say about that sorry for the late review for the Jackal Boy Broly movie Jackal Boy Super Broly but we get there in the end so yeah I want to say thanks for watching thanks for tuning in um I'm going to be doing more reviews. I'm going to be reviewing um, Dragon Ball. I'm sorry, Kingdom Hearts, F3, and Resident Evil. Yeah, but I have to play them first. You know, uh, you know, you have to wait a little bit long for me to do my reviews. But it's always worth it in the end. You know, I hope at least I hope it is. So yeah, uh, I want to say thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. You guys are the greatest. And um, yeah, stick with me, and we're going to be doing more. Take care, warriors. Thank <laughs> you.